Hey gang, Jeff Reinhardt here, LMP in Lancaster Online, coming to you from Mannheim Central, home of the Barons, for the week 10 edition of the LL Football Roundtable, brought to you by uh, Bobby Ray Hall Lexus. Week 10, I said it, week 10, Tyler, we made it. Uh, final of the regular season uh, here on Friday night and a big game on Saturday. Uh, huge games across the LL this week, including the Barons here. They'll get Exeter on Friday night, which is a monster game. Uh, Hemfield can clinch in Section 1. You got uh, Central Exeter in Section 2. Solanco can clinch in Section 3. LS at Wyo on Saturday for the Section 4 title. Lancaster Catholic can clinch Section 5 on Friday night against Schoolkill Valley. So a great Week 10 on tap. All right, we wanted to come to Mannheim Central for Week 10 because this is a monster game. They've been on a collision course. Uh, and they both took care of their business, and here they are. It's a rematch of a District 3 5A game last year, which Exeter won. The rematch is Friday night. Let's bring in our first guest to the show. Uh, for Barron's Exeter, this is Mr. Landon McGalliger, Mannheim Central wideout, uh, DB type safety kid. Been here forever and have a, just having a really good career for Central. So we wanted to come chat uh, week 10 and Exeter. Give me your thoughts through the first nine weeks. Obviously, you guys are playing pretty good. You're nine and zero, putting up a lot of crooked, funky numbers. Yeah. Where are you guys at here through nine weeks? Uh, I think we're doing pretty well. We've just been taking the season one week at a time, not really thinking ahead and just moving along in our, with our schedule. A lot of crooked numbers, as I mentioned, and you're part of the O and the D, but your offense has been terrific balance. Zach's been great up top throwing the ball over the place. This Bryson Armold kid is like getting 300 yards every week, it seems like it. Speak to the O first. How good has your offense been? Speaks to the line playing good up front. You're scoring a ton of points. How good's your offense been here so far? Uh, we've been pretty good. Everyone's kind of clicking and we're working together, which helps. We've formed a really good bond over the however many months it's been since last year. And that's just helping us play pretty well throughout this season so far. Exeter's pretty big up front. You just started poking around with the film, I know, but they're they're kind of known for their line play. You guys are kind of, uh, you know, you kind of mirror each other. How huge is trench play, blocking, keeping Zach upright, and making holes for Bryson on Friday? Large. I mean, it's it's the game, you know, without us. I mean, without anyone, but without us, the, like, it doesn't start, you know. We got to make sure we can open up holes and keep Zach on his feet, and without any of that, we don't we don't have a game. You were in the game with Exeter last year. You remember it. Do you remember the feeling in your gut when you walked off the field that night? And did that game fire you up for a year later now? Uh, it definitely fired me up. I'm ready to go. I'm so excited to play. But uh, after the game, I mean, it was horrible. You know, it was the last time seeing the senior guys, you know, and they, they were really like, they brought me up and they helped me, especially Jeff Hauser. You know, he was a big mentor for me. But yeah, it was a, it was a bad feeling, you know. But coming back this year, I'm, I'm ready to go. Yeah, it definitely sucked last year. That was, that was a big that that hurt. So this is a big revenge game, and it's gonna be a great game. It's gonna be very close yeah, at the end score, but um, it's gonna be amazing. We're gonna have a lot of people here, and it's gonna be a really good, really good show. And thanks to the folks at Mannheim Central, they ought to be in a good mood. They've killed everybody they've played, and we're back in the studio. I'm Mike Gross, and this is the LL Football Roundtable brought to you by Bobby Ray Hall Lexus. Seated to my left, John Walk. Seated to my right, Jeff Reinhardt. These dudes are out in the trenches. They're football, <laughs> high school football, media warriors. And we're going to talk about what they've seen and what they're going to, and, and we're going to particularly focus on some very big regular season finale games, a little bit of a look at the district playoffs, a little bit of a look at what just happened, what might happen next. Uh, so here we go, Ryan's. Yep. Quick, your thoughts. Qu quick points. Yeah. Last week. Uh, yeah, from last week. Three quick things. Salt Garden Spot, E Town. Garden Spot. This was the most surprising down. score Ooh. of the year to me. Not overly stunned that Garden Spot beat them, but yeah, not, how they yeah, beat them. Right. How? 66 points. First play from scrimmage. 70 yard touchdown. Boom. E uh, Garden Spot gets it back. First play from scrimmage, boom, touchdown run. Two, they ran two plays and it was 14 yeah. nothing. Just like that. Garden Spot was wonderful. Kai Harding, the quarterback, another 100 rush, 100 pass night. He had three touchdown runs and two touchdown passes. Uh, Jaden Burkholder had uh, two touchdown runs and a touchdown catch. Garden Spot was incredible. And now they have a uh, big game here this week with Solanco. Solanco can clinch, but if Garden Spot beats Solanco, 
They share the section they share three the title. title yeah. Yes. Okay. Tip of the hat. Andre Weidman, our guy at Ephrata. Seems like he's been there forever. Having a great huge second half to the season. He had a lower body injury, shall we say. We'll go NHL we with that one. Uh, but he's back and healthy and just blowing stuff up. He joined the 3,000-yard club last week in a win over Muhlenberg. And he's now scored 34 touchdowns rushing tops in program history. So he's number one in touchdowns, number one in rushing yards. He's a power guy. He's really good. And he needs to go play in college. Wink, <laughs> wink. Uh, lastly, uh, milestone coach milestone this week. Brett Myers, rookie coach at Twin Valley. Between his stops at Pottstown, Middletown, where he won those titles, went to state finals, and now Twin Valley. Uh, he's at 99 wins. So if Twin Valley can beat Hatboro Horsham, the Hatters, in a non league game on Friday, the Hatters, the Hatters and they're one and six and struggling. So if TV wins, they'll get into districts for sure, and Brett Myers will get his 100th win. So. Not to be confused with the former Phillies. <laughs> Just Correct. Say. I always look at that, and I'm like, we got Phillies yeah. on the mind right now. Yeah, we can't help it. Phillies people. Uh, but yeah, Brett Myers going for 100 on Friday. Tip of the cap to him. Okay, we're going to quickly go through uh, sort of updating district playoff situation. Some interesting developments oh, here. Yeah. Uh, and last time we did this, we went from big schools to small. We're going to go the opposite direction this week because in AA, the smallest class in which we have anybody, uh, Anvil Cleona is now the number one seed after an impressive beating of uh, oh, Schuylkill yeah. Valley uh, of last week. Uh, again, with uh, Phoenix Music, we can't get enough of the Phoenix. Uh, oh, they are the number one seed. They're six and three. Wow. They play Northern Lebanon this week, where, where they will be favored in that game. Um, I think their main concern in the field for make it number three. The three seed is Trinity, which is five and four, but they have really pretty good schedule. They have high quality losses. And of course, <laughs> if they maintain that number one seed, they would not have to play them until the final. Correct. Yeah, and both they, games at home. And, and it, both games at home. Very good, good for very those good. guys. Um, in 3A, six make it. And we have <laughs> we have five teams that theoretically at least still have a chance. Why I'm missing, of course, is the number one seed undefeated. Lancaster Catholic is the number two seed, also undefeated. Hamburg, number four. Schuylkill Valley, number five. Burke's Catholic number eight, and they play Elko uh, yeah. this week. Now, Burke's Catholic is only three and six, but against a good schedule, yep. you know, it, it's a little bit of a long shot, but it's still out there. Uh, 4A, the aforementioned Mannheim Central, number one seed undefeated. McDevitt now number two at seven and one, mm -hmm. and LS is the third seed. Uh, they are eight and one. They only have one loss, and of course, they have a big one this week that we'll get to. Elko. Burke's Catholic, Elko is the 10th seed in 4A, so they're theoretically still alive. Elko has had a decent year given the, the sort of step up in weight class that they've yeah. had to do. 5A, of course, we have 75,000 schools. <laughs> Solanco is the one seed, Exeter is the two seed. They are both undefeated. They both have had great years. Uh, E-Town, the sixth seed with two losses, Garden Spot, the nine seed, even though, as we just mentioned, they really handled E-Town on that. And, and Ephrata at number 11, uh, still very much alive. Oh, yeah. The number 11 seed oh, with, yeah. with three losses. Six, <laughs> 16 teams make it in 5A. That's a lot. Number 14 through 16 in the current power ratings are Cocalico, Warwick, and Conestoga Valley. How about that? <laughs> so, uh, you know, lots of people still you know, alive. Who knows? I'm not even going to parse that because it'll take too long. 6A, uh, Central York, which has really emerged as a power of late, is now the number one seed. Hempfield remaining number two, coming off a of loss the previous week, not last week. Mm. Uh, so we have four, seven, and two teams that are still alive in 6A. Hempfield, uh, well, three, Township and Wilson. Wilson is the seven seed eight make it and they play each other on friday that's by the right way. township and wilson play each other on uh which well, any other year would be the headliner game of the week that's right but there's so yeah township yeah. wilson this week but there's a couple other games that are just like wow for yeah titles, yeah and so. there there's a lot of clarity i i think for for with one league we one week left and we have a lot of high seeds. It's not just we have a lot of teams that have a chance to make it. We also have a 30-17 league with 13 from Berks County. Yeah. Take those away, and we're yeah. focusing on Township Wilson this week. No so, doubt. Yeah, know, that's there's true. a give and take. But of the five of the five classifications repped in the LL, 
four number one seeds. Yeah, that's that's, 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 that's really unusual. good. That's that's very. Yeah, it's really good. And you know, and even where you talk about Wyo, well, if it wasn't Wyo, it'd be Lancaster Catholic. Yeah, they're number you know, two. They're right yeah. behind them. Uh, all right, three big ones oh, yeah. this week that we want to talk about. Week ten games with a lot on the line. Let's start with Exeter, Man on Central. John. Man, was this one a lot of fun to put together, just kind of putting, you know, down stats and numbers, trying to figure out where's the difference here. But, you know, almost every single category, run, pass, total defense, offense, uh, giveaways, tackles for loss, interceptions, sacks, these teams really aren't separated by all that much. All that is to say they're very similar in almost all offensive and defensive categories. I think which especially if you show, factor in strength of schedule. Right, and yeah, it goes yeah. to show, uh, you know, why they're both 5-0, 9-0. Winner gets the, what, Section 2 title. Um, both coming off big-time wins. They've been blowing out opponents. Even looked at um, as far as Section 2 opponents. Mannheim Central's won 317-41. Exeter's won 232-53. to 53. So mm. still same amount of points kind wow. of given up there. Um, so for me, it's going to come down to kind of the, the game breakers there. Exeter, Joey Schlafer, the Penn State recruit, had a good week last week as far as running and catching, and, and I think he can throw the ball too. Yeah. Um, so he's going to be the X factor that Mannheim Central is really going to have to focus on taking him away. Uh, quarterback Mason Rotelli, 73% passer, 16 touchdowns against quarterback Zach Hahn of Central, 1,700 pass yards, 25 touchdowns. Uh, the running backs on each side for Exeter, it's Richie Karstein. Um, he's close to 1,000 yards, 15 touchdowns. For Central, it's Brayson Arnold. He's 1,600 rush yards, 25 touchdowns. Mm -hmm. Aaron Enterline kind of seems to be that kid who can do Home almost runner. anything that yeah. the Swiss Army knife there uh, for the Barons. So leading tacklers um, for Exeter, uh, Lu Lucas Plange, 54 tackles. Get this, I was looking at Man I'm Central's leading tacklers. They have four players of 50-plus tackles. So they've been busy. Um, so oh, wow. It's going to be a good one at the end yeah. of the day. And, and don't forget, they played in districts last year, and Exeter. Yes. It's a very good yeah, point. Yeah, Exeter axed them. It was 36 nothing at halftime, yeah. and it ended up. Yeah, we talked all year 25. about how much Central's defense had improved from the previous year. Yeah. And then Exeter really took it to them they in, did. in that game. Yeah, yeah, I think that, you know, I always. I don't like to play the revenge payback card too much. They're kids. But Central's aware of that, and you saw it the piece at the top. It's, they've thought about it for a year. They, I think Central know. is pretty clearly better than they were last year. Oh, yeah. There's no question about that. It's less clear that Exeter is better than they were last year, especially the way yeah. they were playing at the end at of the, the end year of last, last year. year. Yeah, they caught fire. Uh, so, but what Exeter did to Hemfield two weeks ago really that was impressive. Yeah, yeah. yes, no that question. Was against no question. Hemfield's defense, which is usually pretty gnarly, and they scored 44 on them yeah. and really pasted them. That's an awesome game, man. That, yeah. That's just. I really don't know nuts. who I would pick if I had to make a pick well, in this game. I, I got stuck. I got stuck doing the solo picks well, this did, year, and I. Who'd I, you go with? Not to be the total homer guy. I took. I took Central based on the offensive numbers. Just if, if, right. if Han does what he does, and, and you Arbol weigh that against strength of schedule, you weigh that against strength of schedule, and, and they're at home. There's no way to get to the bottom of that. The revenge yeah. factor, and who knows? Exeter might win forty-five nothing. I have no idea. Yeah, but. Yeah. The more I looked at Central's crooked numbers, I was like, oh my gosh. And Here's then, what some people don't understand wow. about sports. Sometimes the smartest thing you can say is, I don't know what's going to happen. Right. And that, that shows how much you know, not how much you don't know. Still, if Exeter yeah. wins, I'm sure somebody will track me down. Tell your buddy Ryan Hunter yeah, for giving us the motivation. <laughs> I'll, get, to, I'll get that walking down yeah. to the field. Who'd pay, who'd That's because you're this? a beloved figure in, in our culture. Yeah, yeah. Let's face it. Face you, it. Never our, hear, you never hear, hey, thanks for picking us. Oh, my God. But you hear, you know, hey, that's what yeah. you get, man, yeah. for not picking us. All right, whatever. Yeah. Central exit, that's going to be Or nuts. you picked against us, and you were right. That one you will never hear. Exactly. Uh, and it's too bad they won't play in districts this year. Right. That oh, been that's really right. Good. That's a good Central's call. Yeah, they will not play in districts. So this is yeah. it for all the marbles. Yep. I mean, this yep. is a gigantic game in the state on Friday. Okay. The mighty Wyoming missing Oof. against the... I think pretty mighty also at Lampton yeah. Strasburg, right? Yeah, that's a think? Saturday game, yep. one thirty over at Wyo. I'll be over there. Um, top two defenses in the league. Wyo's giving up 100 and 150 yards a game. Yeah. That's pretty paltry. And, and LS part of right that is complimentary football because they are so, con they control the ball, yep. they control the clock. They yep. Uh, LS is right behind them at like 165 yards a game. Uh, they're both like one, two in rushing yards allowed and passing yards allowed. 
Wyo's only given up 69 points total in nine weeks. That's pretty wow. unbelievable. Uh, two kids, I guess, that I want to watch here. Hunter Hildenbrand for LS has been great. 85-yard uh, touchdown run last week. Uh, uh, I think he has five touchdown catches in the last three games. You, you've seen him the last couple of weeks. Oh, yeah, he's good. Yeah, he can just <laughs> he's their flank kid. He can go up and go get it. They'll jet sweep him and do, do all kinds of stuff with him. He can throw the ball. And when I asked him yeah. about what was that Wildcat package? Well, I'm the backup quarterback. Yeah, it's yeah. like, sure, but the way you were in there at quarterback was more Wildcat set up. All that is to say yeah. the kid can throw, run, pass, catch yep. the ball. Yeah. Wyo must defend him. Ben Zeckman, Wyo's quarterback. We talk a lot about their O-line and their running backs averaging 12 yards a carry, which is pretty crazy. Ben Zekman, the Y.O. quarterback, doesn't get a whole ton of pub because he basically turns around and yeah, hands, he's very, hands he's the very, ball off. He's, he's a field general. He does a exactly. really good job. Six for six for 100 yards last week. Yeah, with a touchdown. The, that's the game. The game that uh, I saw them. It was very similar. He, yeah. he, he completed. He didn't throw much, but he nope. completed every one he threw. He's completing 77 percent of his passes for 700 yards. 10 touchdowns, one pick. Top top rated passer in the league. So game management game. Zekman's gotta run the show for them. Don't put it on the ground. Don't turn it over. And you know why I was gonna run and they'll be fine. Uh, Trent Wagner for <clears throat> LS has done a lot up top this season, throwing to Hildenbrand. He can't throw any picks. He can't turn it over. The the yeah. core the core of why I'm missing is Javon Williams, yeah, and this other line. I'm not going to remember Pace the kids' names, but another another big Ziegler. lineman who's bigger than Javon Williams, who is the number one ranked recruit in Pennsylvania, by the way, and he's yeah, yeah. Penn State commit. Yeah. And then the tight end who has started to get Division One offers Ethan, too. I, yeah. uh, those three guys are That's the core of that yeah. team, yeah. and I don't know how there aren't many teams in 3A that are going to be able to deal with that. The question is, how is LS with their with their excellent defense? How are they going to be able to deal with it? What's their track record against the wing T? I'm really putting you on the spot with that, John. But what do you what do you know? Is there anything we have on that? I think the two times I've seen them, they've played in Elko and have played in Anvil Clune, I believe, two uh, power which are not wing teams. T, but this no, but, but they're, they're, yeah, they're, this is like probably the fifth or sixth team that's really run based as that far as multiple options yeah, that they yeah. really have to keep an eye on. The ball could go here, ball could go there, so they're well versed. Yeah. However. They haven't faced a line like that either. No. <laughs> yeah, they Dallas. haven't faced a line like that. So. And that's almost like there's nothing you can do about right. that. You you just have to. It uh, does make me wonder, though, if LS can keep a lid on the Wyo run game, then Zekman really falls on his shoulders. He doesn't turnover. throw it much because they yeah. haven't had to throw it. True. Maybe yeah, now they are going to need some turnovers or some sacks. LS, the last couple of years, especially during this ride, they have prided themselves on their line. Right. Iron Pioneer, their O-line's been really good. Wyos is like they're, you know, they're, they're the measuring good. stick now for lines, yeah. kind of in that, yeah. in that section. Yeah, and that, that's and very that unusual. Class. What Why I'm missing has going yeah. now for the size of that school is a, and, a, and a public school. Uh, hello, uh, yeah. that's uh, it's very unusual. Ryan's, we're yeah. going to put you on the spot again. You made a pick. I took Wyo just yeah. because I mean they've won. I 30, think most yeah. people would. Yeah, they've, they've won 33 five. games in a row. Yeah. Their line is outstanding, mm -hmm. and in a game where this should probably come down to line play and who's going to own the trenches, who's going to own the running attack, I don't see how you can't pick Y.O., but I think L.S. will probably, no offense to anybody else, but I, and Burke's Catholic gave them a game, but I think L.S. should, could give Y.O. It's probably its stiffest test yeah, here, I think. Yeah, I would think so. Think. All right, now the third game, these are two teams that we didn't totally see coming at the beginning of the year the way we these other ones that we're talking about. It's Solanco and it's the spot. Yeah. Brian, your thoughts? Well, Garden Spot, I hadn't seen them, and I saw them last week just dismantle E-Town. I mean, they were they were unbelievable. And I didn't even realize it until after the game, but that's that set up a first place game here in Coryville. Solanco's a game of garden, uh, hit a garden spot. Mules are 9-0 and for the first time since 2015. So if Solanco wins, they get the section outright. If Garden Spot wins, they get a share. And Garden Spot's playing <laughs> really, really well. But now they, they got to they stuff Solanco's run. Uh, Mules are number one in the league in rushing more than Wyo. They have 2,800 plus rushing yards. Wow. Uh, Brody Mellinger, their quarterback, has been really good. This kid's made all the right reads. All fall, all nine games, he's just been really good. When to pitch, when to keep, when to give it to the fullback. Um, Solanco's D, 
in the spotlight, I think, in this one, because Garden Spot can do so many different things. And the Kai Harding kid, I'm so glad I got to see him live. He is just not the biggest dude, but boy, he makes plays. Probably the most well-balanced quarterback in the whole league as far as yeah, pass run and pass. run. Yeah. And, they, and they run that play, that, that play where he fakes it and the kid goes up straight up the middle and everybody, everybody goes to tackle the back. And Harding has it, and he's going around the left end, and yeah, he's 20-yard. That, that ball handling by a quarterback, that's all. really a key thing in high school football. Yeah, and he does it really touchdowns. well. Yeah, yeah, he's done it really it's well. Nuts. So this should be an awesome game. This went from being, well, that's an interesting Week 10 game, to, oh, my, the outright section championship is up for grabs. And Garden Spot, oh, by the way, is playing really well. Solanco has just kind of been chugging along here. They're, they beat E-Town, the team they had to beat early, and they've just kind of taken care of their business here the last couple of weeks. Running the ball, Foreign's been great, Harris has been great, Elijah Cunningham has been unbelievable. Now it's it's, and this it's is, outright if Solanco wins. Outright if the it's Mules co win. It's co-section. Oh, if, if Garden, Garden Spot, Spot Springs won. And these other two games we've been talking about are section championship games. Yeah, these are. Out, right, Exeter yeah. and Central and LS. Tommy and Long, heck of a job with the scheduling yeah. this year. Yeah, and he, wow. you know, he had Wilson and Township. And Township. You can't fault him for that, even yeah, though it's usually to be an Frenfield. epic uh, as far as the stakes and everything. Yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, where are you guys going, John? Where am I going on Friday? I'm going to Manheim Central against Exeter because I have to get up early the next morning to eat at the Big Spring oh, uh, for cross country cross country. Yeah. 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 <laughs> nice. Uh, I'm going to go to Leesport and see our old pal Bruce Harbach. I can't wait for that. <laughs> uh, Schoolkill Valley Lancaster Catholic Crusaders nine and zero. They win. They win it outright. If Schoolkill Valley Springs won, they tie. After. Anvil Cleona really pinned one on them last week, 42 to yeah, 10. Yeah. Wow. Uh, so we'll see what the, the Panthers do here, but Lancaster Catholic can clinch out right. So see you in Leesport. All right, gentlemen. Next week, the dust will have cleared Ooh. in terms of the regular season, yep. and we'll be able to take a good look at the matchups and in the district playoffs. So that's will be our focus next week. That's it, gang. This has been the LL Football Roundtable brought to you by Bobby Rahal Lexus. For Mike Gross, for John Walk, for Jeff Reinhardt, see you later.